Hello and welcome back to Rheumatology for Medical Students and Interns. And here we are, our special guest, Jackie Jane, again. Hello, Jackie. Hi, Dr. Chan. How are you today? Good, how are you? Fabulous. So after a very long working day, the two of us stay here and talk about rheumatology for you guys. Today we will talk about osteoarthritis. This is a very common condition that you as a medical student and intern will see in rheumatology patients. So let's go into a case um, and we will talk more. Jackie. Yeah, so today we had a 60 year old female who came to our clinic with bilateral hand pain. She had pain in the distal interphalangeal joint and then also the proximal interphalangeal joint. She said that her pain lasted about 15 minutes in the morning, um, was worse in her dominant hand, and was also worse when she tried to grip things. So for example, starting her car was more difficult, mm. um, opening a water bottle was more difficult, and then she also described that her fingers felt like they were getting knobbier. Excellent. Jackie asked a very important question about ability to open the bottle. This question is crucial when you evaluate patients with osteoarthritis because this disease impacts a lot to our patient's daily activities. So whether a patient can open or not a bottle can tell a lot about her condition. All right, so what is the diagnosis? So the diagnosis for this patient was osteoarthritis. Um, her presentation was pretty classic of how osteoarthritis presents. It's more common in females, especially after the age of 45. Under 45, it's more common in males. The hand pain, although not always bilateral, is usually worse in the dominant hand because it's used more often. And for most diagnosis of osteoarthritis, we do a good history and a physical exam for the patient, and then also labs to rule out other causes of hand pain and then also some imaging studies to see what the joints look like. Exactly. Now, Jackie, you mentioned about imaging study. Mm -hmm. um, I think we will do some imaging for this patient. If we're going to look at her x-ray now, what would you expect to see in the x-rays? Yeah, so on her x-ray, we would expect to see joint space narrowing, mm -hmm. osteophytes, and then also collagen degeneration. So those are the textbook version, right? <laughs> we, well, you guys are very smart, you learn a lot about osteoarthritis from textbook. A practical question is, someone present hand joy pain, how would you differentiate or distinguish between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah, so osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, they may have some similar symptoms. Uh, most patients are complaining of joint pain, especially in their hands. Rheumatoid arthritis tends to be more bilateral and also affects different joints. So there will be more pain in the wrist mm -hmm. and also in the MCP right here. So the patients will have a little bit different pain and different joints will be involved between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Well, and you will hear about rheumatoid arthritis in a different module. But uh, let's move on to treatments uh, because osteoarthritis is so common. So I would like every medical student and intern should know about treatment of this condition. Mm. So how would you treat our patient today? Yeah, so the treatment for osteoarthritis is multifactorial, often involves weight loss, physical therapy, and then anti-inflammatory agents such as NSAIDs. Mm -hmm. So for this lady, let's say, if she have stomach problem or kidney problem, what would you do? Yeah, so for patients that have stomach issues, you can do NSAIDs plus a PPI, mm -hmm. a proton pump inhibitor, or you can do a COX-2 selective inhibitor or acetaminophen. Acetaminophen, that's a, that's a great drug uh, for osteoarthritis, but many people often forget. What I usually tell patients, actually you saw today, is um, I advise patients take extra strains and they can alternate with NSAIDs. So instead of taking many NSAIDs a day, you can take one or two, and then you can one or two acetaminophen. And by doing so, by combine those two drugs, it can control the pain better. Um, but one more thing about this, have you heard about topical pain medication? No, I haven't. Okay, um, so topical pain med like NSAID, or the name usually is diclofenac 1%. This is a gel that you apply 
Um, it's very similar to um, moisturizer to your face, <laughs> but patient will apply directly to their joint pain. And topical NSAID nowadays is considered a very safe. Well, first of all, because patient don't take their mouth, mm -hmm. right? So all the side effects that you virtually think about, they can be el eliminated. So you apply directly to the hand, the fingers, the wrist, and hopefully the pain will get better. So that's one thing about topical pain. Dr. Chan, where do you see the future of therapies going for osteoarthritis? Great question. A lot of people uh, come to uh, this clinic, um, also refer from this clinic, they ask me, can we do anything for this patient? Because a lot of time, I don't know when, but some people think osteoarthritis is a normal wear and tear disease. So that's it, not much we can do, right? However, uh, there's some new exciting study uh, how we control pain. So this particular area has been presented at the ACR conference last year, the area called a nerve growth factor, NGF. Have you heard about that? Mm -mm. Well, so basically what happened is whenever you in pain or I in pain, we send a signal to our brain and telling, hey, I'm in pain, help me, right? <laughs> in order to control pain, by far we use NSAID, we use opioid, and which is not a very good option. Every year we have thousand, even hundred thousand people die because of side effect from opioid. So in order to control those pain, what we do is we inhibit or we block the no growth factor, the NGF. And the study so far has shown very promising results. So I think the future would be we dive into a deeper level with osteoarthritis at more, uh, like, um, I would say, molecular level, where you can figure out the pain pathway and then we block that. It's somehow similar to autoimmune disease, and I think that's very exciting for us in the future. That's great. Anything else? Yeah, how do patients typically present to your clinic with osteoarthritis? That's another great question that a lot of students come to this clinic. Also, when you see, uh, because you're gonna become a future rheumatologist, right? When we see patients here for osteoarthritis, most of them have severe conditions. Simply because if they have mild conditions, the family doctor, they will take care of that, and then if the pain still persists, then we'll refer to see me as a pain doctor specialist in um, joint. Now, what I usually do is we need to re-evaluate patients. Remember a story about OA versus RA? A lot of time people can, we can misdiagnose this. Sometimes people have rheumatoid arthritis and we misdiagnose as osteoarthritis. And the two treatments are completely different. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we treat wrong, of course it will not improve. So first of all, when a patient comes to see me and you see, to, uh, you see the patient together here, we need to re-evaluate the patient. And yes, we continue our NSAID physical therapy. In fact, you notice that I make a lot of video yeah. about physical therapy, mm -hmm. right? Because I want to re-emphasize the role of physical therapy in treating pain. Many times we forget, we just give medications and let the patient go home and take medication. But changing diet, modify weight, and then also you can do home therapy, those are substantial, improve their pain management. Now, the other thing that you may see um, in some cases here, I use other medication. Do you recall some of them? Do you remember some of the medication that I use? Not typical uh, for uh, OA treatment? Yeah, so gabapentin was one of them. Mm -hmm. How about antidepressant? Have mm -hmm. you heard about that? Yeah. Yes. So antidepressant medications, sometimes we can use to treat chronic pain. When we're in pain, a lot of time we, we feel sad, and it's very common that we have depressions. Uh, but antidepressant, SSRI, for example, they can also block pain pathway. And by doing so, um, we can control patient pain better. So that's why some of the, some cases you saw a patient with me, I try gabapentin, I try Zoloft, I try Paxil. Those are SSRI and 
had been proven in clinical study um, to improve pain for patients with osteoarthritis. Okay. All right, anything else? Do you recommend exercise for these patients? Absolutely. Uh, we do. We recommend people have an active lifestyle, exercise, hiking, go do whatever. So let me ask you this. If uh, Let's go back to our patient today. She has hand osteoarthritis and also she has knee pain. What exercise do you recommend for this lady? Yeah, so for this lady, depending on her risk factors and if she already has some osteopenia or maybe even osteoporosis, then you would want her to do weight-bearing exercises such as walking, as long as this isn't giving her too much trouble or pain. If she is having a lot of pain with walking, then other therapies such as um, walking in a swimming pool will help give her some resistance and maybe also help with weight loss, which could decrease her pain as well. Walking in swimming pool, that sounds fancy, <laughs> right? It actually is considered aqua therapy. So basically, when we are walking in a swimming pool, we have less gravity. So there is much less gravity pushed on between the joint and patient, they feel less pain. Because of that, they can move their muscle, they can do a little bit better when they walk. Um, that actually has been studied and proven to improve pain. However, sometimes it's just not very practical, right? Uh, because of the access to swimming pool is not available to everyone, but also weather condition too, mm -hmm. right? And with COVID-19, so there's many factors. But you're right, we need to identify risk factor and then we do exercise accordingly to each patient's situations. And that will hopefully will maximize treatment plan in conjunction with medication, therapy, exercise, diet chain. That is a better way to control pain in osteoarthritis. Anything else? Nope, those are all the questions I have. All right, thank you, Jackie, and thank you, everyone, and we will see you in the next module. Welcome to Rheumatology for Medical Students and Interns.